very warm welcome to your evening news bulletin with television Tonga News. Making headlines, Their Majesties the Queen Mother and Queen Anaspao officiates in a ceremony to welcome members of the Free Wesleyan Church of Tonga. Whole House Committee approved to divert the 480,000 pounds allocated to students' transport to the salary of teachers at churches' schools. And court grants one application for leave to move for a judicial review while refusing two others filed by MP for the Matapu No. 8. These are more stories later on in this bulletin, together with the latest news from around the region, sports, international scene and the latest weather. I'm Fatai Fenga out with your news for tonight. Their Majesties, the Queen Mother Halaivalu Mata'aho and Queen Anaspao last evening attend a special ceremony in Ukalofa to welcome members of the Free Wesleyan Church for its 90th conference. This was hosted by the ex students of Kunsalote College. Her Majesty the Queen Mother Halaival Mata'aho and Her Majesty Queen Anaspao last night attended a special program to welcome members of the Free Wesleyan Church for their conference 2013. The program is also to mark the completion of Quinsalote College ex students' repayment of their multi million paanga loan for their new office on the railway road in Nukalofa. In her address, the Queen Mother Halaival Mata'aho thanked all the church leaders for their presence. In a special occasion. This occasion brings us together to give thanks to God for helping us pay back our loan through fundraised tribes led by Her Majesty Queen Anaspao. We're looking forward for another project to help boost education of the current students of Queen Salote College. Reports from the Secretary of the Ex Students, Salote Fofuka, says it took five years to raise funds to pay back their loan. When we commemorated Kunsalote anniversary this year, we have already completed paying back our loan to the bank for our new office. The loan was totaled at 3.4 million paanga. These funds were collected from local and overseas ex-students. Last night's events was held at the Kunsalote College Hall and was attended by church leaders conference members and many guests. The whole House Committee yesterday approved to redirect the amount allocated to help with students' transport in the new financial year to the salary of teachers at churches' schools. The amount is 480,000 paanga. Kalolaini Tonglava reports. The number three Tongatapu's people's representatives Dr. Stephen Halapua raised the issue during the whole House Committee's discussion on the 2013-2014 budget estimate of the Ministry of Education and Training. The actual arrangement of the budget estimate initially aimed at assisting its students with their transport fares, in which Dr. Halapua proposed to divert the funds in order to increase the salaries of the teachers who are serving the church. This is because of the low standards of their salaries. Meanwhile, the Honourable Minister of Education and Training, Dr. Anna Taufelungaki, says there's a separate fund which has been divided especially for assisting those teachers and it has its own conditions and regulations. The money targeted to help the students with their transportation. The assistance for the students' bus fares brings together the idea of helping those who are struggling. This is based on the information from the Ministry survey in 2011, which showed that 27% of the local students do not have breakfast before they go to school. The usual average cost for a student's bus fare traveling from New Toa is approximated at 5 paanga per day. If that student wishes to eat, then he will be left without any bus fare. However, if students receive any monetary assistance for their transportation, then parents can use their own money to prepare food for their children. This would help students become more productive in the classrooms. Meanwhile, Dongatapu's number one people's representative to parliament, Aklis Pohiva, said, although he supports the idea, however, the diversion of the funds won't be well organized for the next financial year. I do not believe that the funds will be distributed accordingly given the new financial year. 
Although I'm in favor of the proposal because I know that some villages, they have their own public transportation provided for the students and some villages that don't. Another issue was raised during the deliberations for the vote of the Ministry of Education and Training regarding the money allocated to help raise the teachers' salaries for schools such as Loving Amalia, Dailolo and St. Andrew's High School. The House also discussed as some one of these schools have not received any monetary assistance for over two years now. In the meantime, radio and television Tonga News have received reliable information about one school in Tonga who have used the money for the salaries of their teachers. However, in regards to the ballot relating to the diversion of the 480,000 baanga to help increase the salaries of teachers, 11 members of the Committee of the Whole House were in favour of, of the decision, with 10 members refuting. The deliberations continued last night in which they were approved of all the votes of estimate for the new financial year 2013-2014, which total of 22 votes altogether. Reporting for Television Tong News, I'm Kalolaini Tonglava. The Supreme Court has granted one declaration sought for leave to move for a judiciary review submitted by the MP for Tuantapu constituency 8 Sionetayone. Mr. Dayone filed an application with three distinct declarations he sought. The first declaration sought was on three decisions taken by cabinet members in March 23, 2011 to approve a lump sum payment of 3.7 million paanga to Lord Galaniu Valo, as well as approval for immediate payment of the said sum to Lord Galaniu Valo and also a 119,000 paanga that was paid to Prince Dungi. It's alleged all three decisions were wrong and unlawful. The second declaration sought was on a payment made by the government of Tonga of 2 million paanga to Lord Kanyevalo in June 30th, 2011, as well as a 119,000 paanga payment made to Prince Tungi in June 16th, 2011, and a 1 million paanga paid to Prince Tupilehake in February 10th, 2012. The second declaration sought, based on all payments made, claimed that they were wrong and unlawful. The third declaration sought was that the granting of two government quarters by cabinet members and a government of Tonga to Foto was wrong and unlawful. In making his decision, Chief Justice Michael Scott refused to grant application for leave on the first and third application to move for judicial review. In considering the issues regarding the quarters given to Foto, the Chief Justice ruled that the applicant Sione Tayone failed to submit enough supporting information apart from stating that sections 124 and 126 of the Land Act that have been preached. The Chief Justice also clarified that this application should have been submitted to the Land Court instead of the Supreme Court. In regards to the three decisions made by cabinet and payment of monies to Lord Kalanivalo and Prince Tungi, Chief Justice stated that it was clearly marked confidential and the Supreme Court should be extremely cautious about making a judicial review on a document of this kind. Chief Justice Scott also clarified that cabinet was exercising a specific statutory function and the approval of payment was perfectly a legitimate exercise of execution executive discretion. They include seeking decision made by cabinet members in March 23, 2011 to approve a lump sum payment of 3.7 million paanga to Lord Kalanivalo to approve immediate payment of the said sum to Lord Kalanivalo and also a 119,000 payment made to Prince Tungi and a granting of two government quarters by cabinet members and a government of Tonga to Foto. Leave was granted in respect of the second declaration. This is being adjourned for further direction by the court to be given tomorrow in chambers. The global financial crisis has affected the Heilala Week Festival 2013. However, operations of the Heilala Week Committee are running smoothly with organising the event, which will start off this Friday. Kalolai Netonglava with more on that story. The Hailala Festival theme for this year is Our People, Our Future. The director of the Hailala Committee, Semi Sisika, told Radio Tonga News that it's been four consecutive years that the festival has been affected from the global financial crisis. 
The global financial crisis is affecting the festival. We can begin with the people from overseas who are always attracted to join the event in the past. Nowadays, it has decreased, which is clear, they do not have the money to come to Tonga. Also, the other reason, as you know, there are no budget from government directly for the Heilana Festival, but it only comes from the Ministry of Tourism. The director of the Heilala Week said this year's celebrations is organized according to the funds available. If there are a huge amount of money available for the empowering of the festival, then the production will be bigger. In terms of the stages, the quality of production and also other factors. However, the director of the Miss Heilala pageant, Dafolo Sa Bloomfield, says that 10 young Tongan women will take part in this year's Heilala pageant. Seven of the contestants are from overseas, with three from New Zealand, three from Australia, and one young woman from the United States. The first contestant to register was the Ms. App Immigration New Zealand 2013, Ms. Rosemary Feely, Ms. Digital Mobile Money New Zealand Lita Mary Bloomfield, Ms. Nukalofa Club New Zealand Niamai Tangina Tuitupo. Fourth contestant is Miss Horizon Sun, Sustina Malia Fakafua. Miss Victoria Australia is Miss Angelic Amar Evit, and she's part Rarotongan. Number six is Miss Melia Melangi Australia, Mele Lingisiva Ma'a. And contestant number seven, Miss Lady Maria Australia, Helen Talipeau. Miss Bloomfield says there are plans to include three local Tongan girls on this year's beauty pageant. Miss Heilala competition will kickstart this Friday, 28th of June, with the Miss Heilala orientation program. On the same evening, the Heilala week celebrations will kick off with the block party downtown in Taufaha Road. The Heilala week events will continue on next week with different competitions including the talent show, Gavadonga's club singing competition and also other cultural events. Also, the Miss Heilala competition will continue with the judging events of the 10 contestants, which the winner of the Miss Heilala will be crowned next Friday, 5th of June. However, the Heilala week celebrations will end next Saturday with a military tattoo in Pangailahi. The Council of Churches in the Pacific not only focuses on spiritual issues, but they are willing to help the people in all walks of life. Secretaries from different churches around the region are in Nokalofa to discuss several issues in a full-day meeting that will end on Thursday. This is a follow-up of the Assembly of the Council of Churches in the Pacific that was held in the Solomon Islands early this year. Sinlato with more on that story. Secretaries of churches from around the region connecting the dots and sharing ideas that will help the Pacific Islanders in a four-day meeting in Nokalofa. According to the Secretary of the Council of Churches in Tonga, Reverend Siketi Tonga, this meeting is important for the Pacific Islands, Tonga included. Issues discussed include health, environment, spiritual lives of each of their respective church members and others. This is the first time Tonga joined this assembly with leaders from churches around the Pacific taking part to discuss issues that will help develop one's country. It not only focuses on spiritual issues, but different issues relate to the well-being of the people, families, the country, amongst other things. We are willing to address these issues that would be useful to the country as a whole. There are about 30 participants from different churches in the Pacific taking part in the meeting. They will also look into other political issues, such as the nuclear test in Tahiti and the impact of climate change in Tuvalu, Kiribati and Tonga. Tonga is affected by climate change and it is important that programs are organized to make people aware of it. So the Council of Churches in the Pacific will also look into matters regarding Tonga, Tuvalu and Kiribati. For instance, if there needs to be a workshop to let the people to be aware of these matters, then the Council of Churches would help look for funds. HIV AIDS is a problem that we'll be discussing, teenage pregnancy and others. Representing churches in Tonga are the General Secretary of the Free Western Church, Reverend Dr. Devi Tahavea, and the Secretary of the Council of Churches here in Tonga, Reverend Siketi Tonga. For Television Tonga News, I'm Sin Lato. That's the local news. Pacific is up next.
From around the region, the president of the Asian Development Bank has used his first overseas visit to draw attention to the needs of the Pacific. He traveled to Papua New Guinea to check on a project that he says could help make Port Moresby the travel hub of the region, ABC reports. A visit from the big boss meant it was time to roll out the big toys. These fire trucks are part of a $640 million civil aviation project funded by the Asian Development Bank. One million dollars. So one million dollars, two million dollars, three million dollars. <laughs> the ADB sees improving transport by air and sea as a key way to assist development in Papua New Guinea where roads are poor. And, uh, this is uh, one of the most important airports in these regions and I hope in the future this can be a hub for the uh, whole Pacific uh, regions nearby. Port Moresby's Jackson Airport sees around 200 flights arrive and depart each day. This new parking bay for four planes will cut the congestion. During his two-day visit, Takehiko Nakao met with PNG's Prime Minister and visited other ADB projects. But he was keen to point out that PNG was his first official overseas destination as President of the ADB, and Papua New Guinea's Treasurer saw an opportunity. That means we are special, and whatever we are asking, in a very friendly way, I'm sure the president will give There will be no new loans announced during this trip, and Mr Nakao says the ADB is determined to work with the Papua New Guinean government to address widespread corruption. Having given the Pacific priority in choosing to travel to Papua New Guinea first in his role as president of the Asian Development Bank, Mr Nakao will now head to Australia. In Canberra, he hopes to meet with the Prime Minister to discuss aid coordination but he didn't say who the Prime Minister would be. Liam Cochran, ABC News, Port Moresby. It was a disappointment for the host of a just-completed Melanesian Spearhead Group Leaders meeting. The official Papua New Guinea delegation failed to show up to sign an agreement blatching continuing support for New Caledonia's FLNKS independence movement. ABC with more on that story. At the plenary session of the Melanesian Spearhead Group Leaders meeting, Papua New Guinea's Deputy Prime Minister, Leo Dion, made it clear that PNG would not support independence for West Papua from Indonesia. What was more surprising was that the PNG government seemed to be delivering a similar message at the final formal event, the signing of a declaration that the independent nations in Melanesia reaffirmed their support for New Caledonia's independence from France. Fiji's Prime Minister, Commodore Frank Bainimarama, was there, so were the Prime Ministers of Solomon Islands and Vanuatu. PNG's Deputy Prime Minister was not well, but nobody else from the official PNG delegation showed up, so PNG didn't sign. Sir Michael Samari, who had been invited to the event as the eldest statesman of Melanesia, not as part of the PNG delegation, was surprised and far from happy at that development. However, he did take Papua New Guinea's place when the 25th anniversary of the creation of the MSG was celebrated with five cakes, one for each of the five members, with five candles on each. Sir Michael Samari, once again representing PNG and trying to save it from further embarrassment. Sean Dorney, ABC News, Noumea. ABC News has obtained footage of an Indonesian people smuggler who had meets in moment in a fatal boat voyage. A boat carrying more than 200 people sank in June last year, killing up to 96 asylum seekers. Now in a joint investigation with Fairfax Media, the ABC revealed evidence that one of the people's smuggler responsible is still sending boats to Australia. This fishing village at Labuan on the west coast of Java is described by Freddie Ambon as the final launching spot for many of the boats that he sends to Australia. And it's also one of the places that he claims to have complete cooperation from Indonesian police. In footage captured secretly last month by an Afghan asylum seeker, Freddie Ambon boasts about his expertise in the trade. Bas, 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 bas. if you're with me, you don't have to be afraid. Don't worry. Just go, go, to Christmas, go, go, don't be afraid. But he's also forced to defend his involvement in a deadly boat trip this time last year, blaming it on a Pakistani business partner. It was overloaded, so full, I told him, don't put more passengers on, but he insisted, so it wasn't my fault. 
I did no wrong. I've never done that, bro. I always get them through. They get through, get through all the time. So that problem happened in June last year. The boat sank north of Christmas Island, killing about 90 of the more than 200 people on board. And it's the subject of a coronial inquiry in Western Australia today. Despite admitting involvement, Freddie and his wife discussed their trade as a family business and described their roles in organising up to three boats a month for asylum seekers, or goats as he calls them. Freddie Ambon's also understood to be the key contact for a number of people smuggling bosses using the services of Indonesian police. The police HQ will escort the boat. Perhaps Irfan has told you, I'm a former police officer. Don't ask which unit. I'm a former policeman. This is just for you to know. But it means there is no problem, bro. There is no problem. No problem. No problem. The passengers will get through. The notorious smuggling operative explains how asylum seekers are collected from apartment buildings in Jakarta and transported to one of two ports in the capital. From there, boats come to Labuan to pick up more customers and make the final leg of the treacherous journey to Australia. Mr Ambon says that all along the way, Indonesian police provide coordinated support and protection. That's code for paid help. Listen here. Those you read about in the media who get caught, it's because they didn't do much coordination. Right, that's because they didn't have good coordination. But if they do have coordination, they can get through to Christmas Island. We've been told that in return for bribes of between ten and twenty thousand dollars, Indonesian police will provide an escort to the coast and a guarantee that the asylum seekers can leave without being arrested. Yeah. Yeah, Angkor Beach. It's also guarded by police, my police, my men. The involvement of Indonesian police in the people smuggling trade has long been suspected, but now this video seems to give clear evidence that high-ranking police chiefs are key players in allowing the boats to leave. George Roberts, ABC News, Labuan, West Java. That's the Pacific News. Here's a look at the latest sports news with Sunila Thor. In sports, day one of the Kaumaitonga tournament series was launched in Vavao Saturday 22nd June with 55 registered teams from different community groups. The guest of honour was the police magistrate for Vavao, Paula Tatafu. In his opening remarks, he encouraged women to continue with their ongoing participation. And I quote, Your victory today is your involvement in this Sports for Health program because when you have physical, mental and spiritual health, you can prevail in all areas of your life. End of quote. President of the Vava'u Netball Committee, Cecilia Fine Taufa, said, We're all new to this, but happy that we're all able to oversee the program. It's a learning experience for us, but a welcoming challenge so that we can do it ourselves. One of the goals of the Gaumai Tonga program working in collaboration with TNA is capacity building as ultimately. Each island group in future events will facilitate their own netball tournament. The games were held at Waterloo Grounds at Mailefihi and Siutlitapu College. Teams that won their rounds will carry on to the quarter and semi-finals to be held next Saturday, June 29, 2013. The Gaumai tournament will start in Hapai on Saturday 29th of June, Ewa on Saturday the 6th of July and Tongatapu to begin on Saturday the 13th of July 2013. The intensity was ferocious. Pat McCabe and Digby Ioane will miss the remaining two tests against the British and Irish Lions with injury, while Lions veteran Paul O'Connell will miss the rest of the tour with a broken arm. The Wallabies will have to patch up their back line with three new backs in all for Saturday's second test in Melbourne. Reserve centre Pat McCabe re-injured his neck in a similar location to the neck fracture he first sustained on last year's end-of-year tour. He will visit specialists in Sydney this week for scans, but the prospect that his career is over is very real for the 20-test package of body-on-the-line determination. 
For Saturday's test scrap, the Wallabies will have to find a new fullback because Barnes will be given this week off because of the concussion he sustained in a head clash with Israel Fulal in last weekend's 23-21 loss to the Lions in Brisbane. Winger Ioane suffered internal damage to his right shoulder and will also require follow-up scans with surgery a possibility. The news is better for inside centre Christian Leali Ifano, who is making solid progress after he too sustained a concussion in the opening minutes of the first test. Letting the match slip, comforted by Hallwell, but the captain might not be leading the wounded. The Chiefs have retained six players beyond this year's Super Rugby campaign. Former Blues utility back Gareth Anscombe and prop Ben Damifuna have committed for next year while four players have signed for two more seasons. Outside back Andrew Harrell, lock Mike Fitzgerald, prop Bauliasi Manu and hooker Rhys Marshall. Auckland first 5-8th, Anscomp is grateful for the faith shown in him by the 2012 champions after being discarded by the Blues. He was snapped up by the Chiefs and has impressed playing out of position at fullback, scoring 163 points before missing their last three games with a foot injury. Lightning struck twice for Rafa Nadal at Wimbledon as the Spanish 12 times Grand Slam champion suffered a shock first round defeat by Belgian outsider Steve Darcy's. A year after losing to Jacques Lucas Rossol in the second round, Nadal was outplayed by 135th ranked Darcy's on court one, losing 7 6, 7 6, 6 4, in front of a disbelieving crowd. Fifth seed Nadal who had never lost in the first round of a Grand Slam tournament before, served for the second set, but Darcy's hit back to move two sets in front. And Cricket Australia CEO James Sutherland said, inconsistent results and a failure to oversee discipline standards led to Mickey Arthur being asked as Australian coach and Darren Lehman taking over. Sutherland confirmed former Australian batsman Lehman would be the national coach through to June 2015. Sutherland and high performance manager Pat Howard sacked Arthur in Bristol on Sunday night with 20 months still to run on his contract. He was appointed in November 2011 and since that time Australia has struggled with inconsistent performances and numerous off-field issues. Australia has won 10 of 19 tests, 18 of 39 ODIs and 7 of 16 20s with Arthur at the helm. And that's sports news. And from the international scene, the White House has attacked China and Russia for failing to hand over Edward Snowden as mysteries surround his whereabouts. It says the incident has harmed the U.S.-China relations. Snowden is thought to spend the night in an airport hotel in Moscow. He was fully expected to board this Aeroflot flight from Moscow to Havana after getting there from Hong Kong. Uh, he wasn't on the plane. We did hear from Julian Assange in a uh, conference call on the telephone a few hours ago that he was aware of where Edward Snowden was, said he was uh, safe but wouldn't divulge any further details. So as of this moment, most people are assuming he is still in Moscow, we, he has not been seen publicly at all, no photographs of him, no one has cited him, but that is the general assumption, but anything more than that is uh, anyone's guess. This has become a diplomatic nightmare for uh, the US, given that you had uh, pictures of Barack Obama and the Chinese president just a couple of weeks ago in a very warm gathering in California, and uh, everything was sort of ended there on a high note, and then it all went downhill very rapidly. Of course, you'll recall those same video from last week at the G8 with Barack Obama and Vladimir Putin, which did not look
so warm. In fact, poisonous is probably the way to describe how the two men sat there together. So uh, a difficult diplomatic situation. Ecuador uh, saying to, to reporters that the foreign minister there saying that they're still considering the uh, asylum requests from Edward Snowden and Julian Assange, Assange revealing that in fact there might be asylum requests into Iceland and other countries as well. Pakistan's new Prime Minister Nawi Sharif says he plans to put the country's former military ruler, Pravez Musharraf, on trial for treason. ABC South Africa, South Asia correspondent rather, Michael Edwards reports. The charge General Musharraf faces dates back to 2007 when he suspended the constitution and imposed emergency rule. He returned to Pakistan earlier this year and he's already fighting a series of charges relating to his time in power which began with him ousting Nawaz Sharif in a 1999 military coup. The recently elected Prime Minister says Pervez Musharraf must answer for his crimes against Pakistan in court. Today we have to deal with the last dictator of Pakistan according to the law and the constitution. He violated the constitution not only once but twice. There wasn't any so-called reason for the sake of the nation but only for his personal interest. In Pakistan, treason carries with it a penalty of life imprisonment or death. God willing, he will go through the legal procedures and come out of this case unscathed. It's not going to take long, it will be a matter of weeks. If it goes ahead, it will be the first time an army chief will have been on trial for violating Pakistan's constitution. Michael Edwards, ABC News. Heavy rain in northern India has stopped the search for victims of last week's flooding. Authorities estimate the floods have killed more than a thousand people. The bad weather has grounded military helicopters, hampering the evacuation of as many as 8,000 people still stranded, many without food and water. Thousands of soldiers have been sent in to help with the rescue efforts. Thousands of people have already been evacuated since the rains hit on June the 15th. In one area of the northern state of Uttar Akhand, priests are preparing to cremate hundreds of victims. Raging rivers swept away houses, buildings and entire villages in the state. More than a thousand bridges have been damaged along with roads, cutting off hard-hit villages and towns. Latest weather forecast issued from Famoto at 7 o'clock this evening. A ridge of high pressure extends onto the group from the southwest, directs a cool southeast wind flow over Tonga. Forecast midnight tomorrow for Tonga for the newest light to moderate southeast winds. Fresh at times, mainly fine today, becoming cloudy with some showers developing tomorrow morning. Elsewhere, light to moderate southeast winds, fresh at times, mainly fine with possible one or two showers. Temperature forecast for Nukalofa, minimum of 20 degrees Celsius for tonight. The Marine Weather Bulletin, a strong wind warning is now in force for Niwa, Hapai and Rabao coastal waters. Southeast winds 10 to 20 knots and moderate seas, a moderate southeast as well. High tide will be at 15 minutes before, after 9 o'clock tonight rather. And that's the latest weather forecast, but before we part, here's a final look at today's top stories. Their Majesty is the Queen Mother and Queen Anaspa will officiate in a ceremony to welcome the members of the Free Wesleyan Church of Tonga. Whole House Committee approved to divert the 480,000 pound allocated to students transport to the salary of teachers at churches' schools. And court grants one application for leave to move for a judicial review while refusing two others filed by MP for Tonga for number 8. And it ends television Tony's bulletin for tonight. More on these stories, call us on 23556. Check out our website or join us on our Facebook page on Radio Television Tonga. I'm Fadai Fenga'a. Thanks for watching. Good evening.